All right, wizard, it's your turn. What are you gonna do? Uh, I guess I'll cast fireball. You're in a five by five broom closet with a beholder. Are you sure? Well, uh, what about magic missile? I'll roll to attack. That's not a melee attack. You just roll damage. Are, are you sure? Let me uh, let me look that up real quick. I'm sure. Roll one d4. Just a minute. I, I haven't found it yet. Go ahead and roll. Wait, 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 wait. Here, here it is. Here it is. You were right. J just roll for damage. I know I was right. Roll one d4. It's a. Uh, it, it's 1d4 plus 1 per missile for damage against a Beholder. You sure that's what you want to do? Yeah, yeah, I can uh, I can be there in uh, 15 minutes. It's fine. There's nothing happening here. Good point. Uh, what about Agonazar Scorcher? Okay, no, Shatter. Now I know how Jenny D feels. That is so familiar, it's painful. But never fear, adventurers. I've got five tips to help you achieve lightning fast combat in D&D today on Short Rest Studios. Hey there adventurers, welcome back to Short Rest Studios. My name is Judd and today I've got five tips to help you achieve lightning fast combat in D&D. Let's dig right into it. Tip number one, prepare and organize. This is just part of the job for a DM, but it bears repeating. Before the game begins, prepare everything that you're gonna need and have it organized so that you can easily reference those stat blocks for monsters, character sheets, anything that you're gonna need to look at over the course of the game to reference quickly so that you can keep up and avoid any unnecessary delays. One of the things I like to do is use Microsoft OneNote to keep all of my DM notes. And that allows me to keep all the information that I need right in front of me and I can link things to each other so that I can access stuff pretty quickly in the app. It's worth taking a look at if you've never used it. Tip number two, use initiative trackers. Keeping up with whose turn it is sometimes gets ridiculously confusing, especially if you have a large party and they're fighting a lot of monsters. So use either physical initiative trackers like the ones that I have on my Valhalla GM screen from Dogmite Games, or you can use an app like Cobalt Fight Club, which you can access in a browser or D&D Beyond's Encounter Builder. Those will help you keep track of whose turn it is when. This may seem like a little bit of a no-brainer, but taking a little extra time to make sure you can keep track of initiative will really help you avoid unnecessary delays along the way. Tip number three, and this is one of my favorite ways to speed up combat in D&D, use side initiative. This is a rules variation that's found in the Dungeon Master's Guide, but it's really, really straightforward. Essentially, the party as a group rolls 1d20 for initiative, and then the DM rolls 1d20 for the enemies for initiative. And then within your groups, you just decide who goes first when, but the initiative role simply decides which party goes first. And since within the party, you kind of choose who goes when, you can strategize and do things differently based on the situation and work out strategies you might not have been able to work out without using side initiative. So it gives some advantage to the players too, I think. Now there's a variation of this that I like to use when my party is fighting a group of monsters that are all the same and it goes kind of like this. The party rolls initiative as normal. Each player rolls a d20 for initiative. I roll one d20 for the monsters only when they're all the same type of monster. Otherwise, it doesn't really work very well. So I roll one d20 for all the monsters and they all go at the same time in the turn order. When the time comes for the monster's turn, I roll one d20 for the attack and any character who would be hit by that roll then takes the hit. Then I roll damage one time for the enemy side and any player who took that hit takes that amount of damage. Of course you can vary this any way you see fit as a DM, but I feel like it's a really effective way to speed things up. Tip number four, encourage planned actions. Typically it's gonna be a player's instinct to make the decision about what they're gonna do as they're starting their turn. But you as the DM have an opportunity to encourage them 
to think ahead a little bit. You can give them a chance to start thinking about their move while the previous player in the turn order is going. Like when they're getting ready to roll damage, you can just say, hey, next person, start thinking about what you're gonna do here. And so when it becomes time for them to actually roll their attack or move or whatever they're gonna do, they have been thinking about it already. And it just takes a simple prompt from you as the other person is completing their turn. This is actually really effective at keeping things flowing, keeping downtime to a minimum, and helping people stay engaged because it feels like things are really happening, which is really what you want in combat. Like you want it to move quickly because that's how it would happen in real life. So you want there to be that sense of motion and speed. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor, hit the like button down below and hit the battle ax to subscribe to this channel so you can keep up with what I'm doing here on Short Rest Studios every week. And if you've got tips for me or for other DMs who are watching this video, do us all a favor, hit me up in the comments, let us know so we can share your knowledge. And if there are other kinds of content that you want to see here on Short Rest Studios, please put that in the comments too. All right, here's your final tip. Number five, use a countdown timer. There's a thing called excessive deliberation where players just think about things forever and never do anything. There are also a lot of unnecessary discussions about rules. I mean, look, you know, we wanted to follow the rules, but D&D is also a game of improvisation. And so the rules aren't always the most important thing. Those unnecessary discussions and thinking about things too long can lead to a lot of lag. And adding a countdown timer adds a sense of urgency so that your players actually feel some of that sense of combat that they need to act now. If you wanna use an actual timer, you can use the countdown timer on your phone, or you can use a little hourglass, something like that. What I like to do is initiate a three count when I feel like things are starting to take too long. There's a little too much thinking and I just say three. And if the thinking or the discussion continues for a little bit, then I say two until I get down to zero and then bad things happen. And this isn't done in a rude way. It's not done to punish anybody. It's done simply to create a sense of urgency and to keep things moving. And it does create that urgency. It creates a little bit of excitement and engagement because it makes it feel like something needs to happen right now. Well, there you go, adventurers. Five tips for lightning fast D&D combat. I'm so glad you joined me today for Short Rest Studios. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up down there. It helps the video get out to more people and hit the battle ax so you can keep up with what I'm doing here on Short Rest Studios. And leave me a comment. I wanna hear from you. I wanna know what kind of things you wanna see on this channel. And finally, I'll see you next time on Short Rest Studios. <laughs>